ever again in his life. And that is why he succeeded. This is the level that you need to start thinking about failure. Let's, let's think of Steve Jobs. And I'm going to give you tons of examples throughout history of failures and comebacks because failure is almost a, a prerequisite for success. It's telling you what not to do. Steve Jobs was fired from Apple. He worked for Apple and was fired from Apple. What's up, freaks? Welcome to another episode of the Steve Eckert Show podcast. Today, we are going to be talking about failure, pure failure, something that I have never done in my life, and I'm going to explain to you how I have never failed and how you can also never fail again in the future after this episode. We're going to take a very, very deep dive into this, going all the way back to ancient times discussing failure. First off, the Steve Eckert Show is a show on how to flip the switch and have a no excuses, badass mindset guiding you to adapt, overcome, and destroy the obstacles that are preventing your success in your mindset, your family, your fitness, and your business so you can stop being a little bitch, get your shit together, and start living life on your own fucking terms all while you create your own personal ideal freak freedom lifestyle. This is all about transforming men and women from where you are to where you want and need, and deserve to freaking be. We're learning today, always on this show, we're learning how to weaponize everything. Today, specifically, how to weaponize your failures. And failures, you could bunch that in with tragedies, and obstacles, and weaknesses, whatever you want to put in there, into that ball, into the category of failure. We're going to teach you how to flip the switch on these failures, and so you could start to think and operate with the with a mindset of operating to dominate in in when it comes to failure. Now the uh, uh, the book Psycho Cybernetics talks about failure and about momentum and about having to it's uh, they say it's like a bike. You can't stop moving forward. If you start st- slowing down or you try to go too slow and steady, it's going to get too wobbly and you're going to stop and you're going to lose all momentum. So it's about momentum. It's about moving forward no matter what. Moving fucking forward. Even if you fail, even if you're off course, even if you need to change direction or course correct, think about baseball. In baseball, you are considered a great baseball player if you have a 300 batting average. That means you've got to hit three out of every 10 times. That means you failed seven out of 10 times, and you're considered great in that sport. So think about that. And and in those seven times of getting out, they're getting data, they're getting information on what not to do, but more importantly, what not to do again and what to do differently and better next time to get those three hits. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan says he, that he missed more than 9,000 shots in his career, that he lost the game-winning shot in almost 300 games or on, in 26 games. He lost over 300 ga- almost 300 games, but 26 times he said he was entrusted to take the game-winning shot and he missed. That's 26 times, and he's the greatest of all time in the NBA. And 26 times, the ball was given to him to take the game-winning shot with the game on the line, and he missed it. I don't even know how many he made on a game-winning shot, but he failed the game-winning shot 26 freaking times. He said he failed over and over and over again in his life, and that is why he succeeded. This is the level that you need to start thinking about failure. Let's, let's think of Steve Jobs. And I'm going to give you tons of examples throughout history of failures and comebacks because failure is almost a, a prerequisite for success. It's telling you what not to do. Steve Jobs was fired from Apple. He worked for Apple and was fired from Apple. Then he also failed on another computer company that he started, like one or two other different companies that he went to, computer companies, until he finally returned and then led it into what it is now with all the fruit phones and all this other stuff going on. So when I opened this up and I said, I've never failed. Now, have I fucked up? Have I missed the mark? All these other things? Hell yeah, I have. More times than I even care to even talk about or can even remember that I've fucked up or 
and I say I haven't failed, we're still going to call it failure because you know what I'm saying by I've never failed. Because if you learn, you either win or you learn or win or get the lessons out of it. There's no losses. There's no failures because it's all data. It's all information. Turning a failure into loss and lessons. That's the way you need to start thinking about it. I've, I've failed so many different things. So many different things didn't go my way. I many different businesses I've started or tried that just didn't work. Or even currently in the businesses I have, different programs or promotions or campaigns that I've pushed and spent tons of time and money and effort and energy into that just dropped, that just flopped. It just didn't work. It just, it, you can't stop. You can learn, all right, what could I have done better? What do I need to do better next time? That's the way you need to think about it. We were, when I, when I was moving to California, we had, a, had businesses in New York. I was moving to California. I couldn't even get approved to buy a house in California. I couldn't even get approved to rent a house. I literally left New York. We drove on our way to California without a place to live and didn't find a way until we were all the way into Utah, only about 13, 14 hours away from California. Finally found a place just to rent because we couldn't get approved for the mortgages we were trying to get at the time. That was failure. Literally being homeless during this time with my family trying to figure out where we're going to live because it was failure on the preparation side, failure on the finances side, failure on in businesses and, and taxes and all this other stuff. Like literally we were homeless for a little while moving to California before we got here. That is a failure, but it's not a failure because it led to so many lessons on how to do things differently, how to do things better. And there was then, then even when we were able to get approved for a home, there was, the, there was this house in a different part of California. It had an 1,100 square foot underground bunkers. First off, an awesome house, huge house, huge property, huge land, underground bunker with 19 beds in this underground bunker with a master bedroom, had two bathrooms in it with a safe and a full under floor storage for storage of tons of stuff. It, it came with two years worth of supply of food for like 20 people or something like that. Ridiculous amount underground bunker, air filtration systems, and all this other stuff. Uh, just nuts. Like this kind of shit you see in the movies. And it just happened to be in this one house. And this was the house we were set on. I was going all in. We were offering so much money on this house above even the asking price and actually were approved for it. So finally, we now are beyond, the, uh, beyond not being able to approve for a mortgage. We're now approved for this house. And we failed getting that. We put all the time and effort into this one house. This was like the, the dream house. And we failed and said, fuck. That's, th- that was like the dream home. And what did that do? It led to our actual dream home, which is in the home we live in now. Like this, this is the house I'll, I'll fucking die in. We'll buy other rental properties and other vacation homes and stuff like that. And, and some lo- locations in freer states to have some land and ranches and shit like that. But this is the home I'll die in. This, that, that, us missing out on that failure. That, that was months. That was months of paperwork and grinding and meetings and negotiating and then failed. It didn't get that house with this underground bunker. Ridiculous underground bunker was a massive failure. That was like heartbreaking because we were like already sold on this house and it, it, it fell through. We got outbid on it and someone else got that house, but it led to us getting our actual dream home. So, Failure and, grat- failure and gratitude go together. Like failure and gratitude go together. And it's basically turning those obstacles into opportunities, turning failure into opportunities. And the, the list of failures go on. That goes way back from being a, a kid and a child and having no friends when I grew up and failing all throughout high school and, and failing at never even getting into the sports that I wanted to get into, all this other stuff, just failure all throughout life. But all of it is just data and information of what not to do of how to take these obstacles, turn them into opportunities. When you, when you look at failure, the actual definition of failure, it's just a loss or collapse or a misstep or non-performance of something that's expected or required. Failure could also be a, a deterioration or a decay of, of something, uh, something that starts failing over time and or an, an act of, of something proving unsuccessful or a lack of success. This is all part of failure and it's required. 
You know Walt Disney, like the Disney, the Mickey Mouse and all other shit? I don't know about nowadays. I know they're, they're probably gone a little sideways the way that they operate their business or whatever, but you can't deny the success and the longevity of motherfucking Mickey Mouse. No, you know, no one wanted to hire Walt Disney as an artist and he, he got hired other places and he had, was doing all these little temporary jobs and his first animation studio went completely bankrupt and no one wanted to hire him. His art was crap. His art was garbage. His ideas were garbage and all these ideas he had for parks and the cartoons and the mouse and it was so stupid. It was, he was told how, how stupid his ideas were. And then when he finally opened up a studio, it went bankrupt. Well, now it's, I think, the over $50 billion in, in revenue a year. So, yeah, failure is needed. Failure is needed. It's like when certain of the, these certain types of things happen, it's like, thank God that happened to me. Thank God it happened to me because thank God we lost that house with the bunker because we wouldn't have ended up in this house. Thank God we were homeless for a little while, moving to California, and we had to rent for three years when we first moved here, couldn't even get approved for a house here in California. Thank God that happened because we would have rushed into something that wasn't the home we wanted to, not even that bunker home, something even worse or in a worse neighborhood. It led us like, thank God all those steps happened and all those times when we thought, oh, this is it. We're going to be getting a shitty home and all this stuff. Thank God that shit happened to you. That's what you need to think of it. You know, when I came out of the Marine Corps, I was, t- I was taking all these tests for the police department. And these are tests that take years. So I had to come home on leave before I even got out of the Marine Corps to take the, the written test because they only do the written test in these counties every four years. It's a four-year hiring process. And took the written test, passed it. I think I got like a 90 on the written test or an 85 and you got like five extra points for being a veteran or something like that. I don't remember, something like that. So I think it came out to be a 90, which is a pretty decent score. So I put you in the top percentages. But then... To become a police officer, and I was long into the process doing the interviews and all these exams and all this medical and all this other shit, and I was about a year and a half, two years into this process of so putting time, traveling back and forth while I was still in the Marines, using my final vacation time to go back and do part of this process to become a cop when I came out of the Marine Corps, and you know that first, I failed the psychological test, then I failed the physical fitness test. Then I retook the physical fitness test and, and finally passed it, retook, uh, and then I failed the background check, then retook the psychological test and refailed the cycle. I can't imagine. They said I was too crazy to be a cop. Fucking crazy. First, they said I was too fat. Then I said I was too crazy. I was too out of shape to be a cop. I was obese to be a cop. They failed me in all these different tests. Obviously, someone or God or the universe or some dickhead police officer I knew back in the day didn't want me to become a cop. And again, it was years of of putting effort and time into this, spending all this time and money and travel and energy, putting it into this to become a cop. And the shit crumbled. It failed. And I was like, holy shit, what the fuck am I going to do now? And if I didn't do that, if if I didn't fail at that, never would have opened up the gyms that I had that led to where I am now, that led to that... Every, every single piece, like, thank God it happened to you. The, the, the Stoics saw failure and gratitude, and I do a ton of, of reading and studying on Stoicism. The Stoics saw, saw failure and gratitude as, as kind of a, a medicine, like, thank you for this experience, because that's a key to like their mental health, to not let shit make them crumble. Convincing yourself that everything is, a, is, is the, exactly the way it's supposed to be. Everything is a stepping stone to the next thing. That, that this is, it's like a gift from the universe. This failure is a gift from the universe because that's showing you where you're not supposed to fucking be. And it's going to lead you to where you're supposed to be. So thank God you failed in this area so you could make it to the area you're supposed to be going to. And being thankful for all the fucked up, the setbacks, the failures, the fuck ups that you had. Failure is opportunity. Even an injury. Like there's, you have a surgery, let's say. It's like, fuck, I can't. You know what? It's, Thank, thankful that you have that time to now slow down and focus on other ways to stay healthy and fit and learn new ways of training that you didn't know about before. Whatever it is, no matter what the situation is, that taking that failure and flipping the script on that shit and writing your own freaking chapter about that failure. Like the, the freaking coronas and all this other stuff that goes on. 
it was it, it made people lose their jobs or have to work from home and it changed their whole lifestyles. Like, thank God it happened because it, it let them spend a lot more time with their kids or gave them more time to restructure their life and do shit that the way they wanted to do it and realize that they have a whole new level of freedom that they never even knew fucking existed because of this failure, because of this situation, taking a shitty situation and flipping the script on it. We've talked about it before, taking suffering and turning it into a superpower, flipping the switch. We did an entire episode on flipping the switch. And that's all failure is, is flipping the switch on failure. You must flip the switch. You have to decide how you, how you, how you take it. The stoicism was started off of a failure, off of a major failure. And I'll tell you a quick story on it. Zeno, who was the, the founder of stoicism, he was a, a rich, wealthy merchant and had ships and all this other stuff. And he was on a ship. He was on a ship and it sank. His ship sank. Losing all his fortune, all his wealth, he was now broke and penniless in in Athens, in Greece, and he just stumbled upon a bookstore, and he started reading about Socrates, and then he started digging into philosophy, and then he just got so deep into it and, and realized a whole new way of thinking after he lost all his riches, but he felt more fulfilled and more focused and more controlled in his life than ever off this major failure where he lost everything, lost his fortune. And he embraced this failure as an opportunity for personal growth. And he just started studying and soaking it in all the different different philosophical schools. And this is when he finally started Stoicism, which is still around to this day, thousands of years later, off of his failure of a sunken fucking ship and a lost fortune. Like that was the foundation of Stoicism right there. That, that you need to view things not as a setback, but as a redirection towards something more meaningful. That's what failure is. All failure is doing is saying, don't go that way. There's something better over here. You fucked up. Even if it's like something that you are guilty of and you fucked up and did a stupid mistake or whatever, that's all falls into the ball of failure. It's just saying, this is not a setback. It's just telling you, you need to be redirected towards something better in a different fucking direction. Something more meaningful over there. Stop going that fucking way and start going this way. That's a way you need to think about every single failure that you come across. Epictetus said, it's, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. And that basically just talks about re- dealing with these failures and how you think of them, how you approach them in your head. Shit. Speaking of California, part of why we couldn't get approved in California is because they have all these weird rules and paperwork and the, the gas bills and the water bills, the, the way they, they charge for water here and for gas here and, and insurance and whatever else and taxes is fucking nuts. I consider luxury tax because we have this awesome weather out here in the area we live in. We love it here. We love it here in Southern California. But we have solar panels on, our, on, our, on the house. We bought a house fully with solar panels. Everything's connected. The pool is, is connected to it. The heater on the pool is supposedly is connected to this. So we were running in the wintertime. It gets a little chilly here at nighttime. So we ran the pool heater all month long for two months, thinking it's attached to the solar. Come to find out that once we bought the house, the solar, yeah, it was there, but it wasn't connected and it hadn't been connected for a while and we didn't do our due diligence. It's our fault. We failed. We actually had a $4,500 and then the next month, a $5,000 gas bill from heating the fucking pool all month long because once you go over a certain level of, of resources, they like quadruple the price. So think about that. That's that's 10 G's, 10,000 fucking dollars within two months on just a gas bill. That's not mortgage. That's not all insurance and whatever taxes. Just on the gas bill, a big major fuck up and failure on 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 our part, on my part. But the think of it as like, Thank God that happened for only two months and not for figuring that after 12 months. And thank God I'm able to pay for this. It, it came out of automatic withdrawal, whatever, auto direct deposit, whatever the hell that shit goes, whatever that's called. When the bills come out automatically, that shit just disappears. Luckily, there's enough revenue coming in from the different businesses that that does it didn't make or break you when some shit like that happens. So you're prepared. Thank God we were prepared for these fuck ups and failures that we're going to have. Like, Steven Spielberg, the movie, the movie guy. You know, he was rejected two times. He, he applied for some film school in USC, University of Southern California, and they rejected him. He was turned down. And now he's just only gone on to gross over $8.5 billion from, from his movies, all the Star Wars or whatever the hell he does and all that other stuff. And 
then then they actually went back later and gave him an honorary degree to the to the school that turned him down. I don't even think he ever even attended it. That's called thank God this happened to me. That's called overcoming failures. That's called you setting the tempo and going in a different direction and figuring your shit out. F I O figure it out. Because here's here's what you need to be thinking about doing. You need to be failing more. You need to learn to embrace failure with an open mind, not being afraid of failure. People are so afraid of it and they avoid it. And then all that doing and, and a fear and avoidance of the failure makes them do nothing, makes them sit still. The, the most, most of the important things that you do in life, you can only do through fucking failure. Now you might, you should dislike failure, but not have some intense fucking fear where you just are avoiding it so much because not wanting to fail is going to motivate you and light that fire under your ass and make you work even better. But fear is just going to make you freeze and and handicap you and and make you actually fucking worse. So think about it. When you're, when you're a baby, you, you learn to walk by first crawling, by standing, by falling all the freaking time. You learn to write by first freaking scribbling. That's it's it starts by failure. It starts by fucking up. Everything you do, every success you had first started with a failure. Riding a bike, you fall and busted your ass a million times. And the problem is when we fear it so much or we fear it so much that we think we can't be it, we want to put on this fake illusion of of perfection that we're just so perfect. And fear of failure and perfectionism will lead to procrastination, will lead you to not fucking act, to not take risks. You're too fucking scared of failing. You need to learn. You've heard the saying, you need to learn to fail or fail to learn. There's a old story, a parable or whatever the hell it's called. There was a boy talking to his grandfather and he says, grandfather, how, how did you become so wise? And he says, I became so wise because I have such good judgment. And the kid says, well, how did you get such good judgment? He says, I got such good judgment through all my experiences in life. And he says, how did you get so much experience? And he says, through bad judgments. Meaning he got that experience from failures, from fuck ups, from bad judgments, which gave him experience, which gave him the good judgment, which got him to be so wise and no shit to be able to teach to this kid. Think about that. The, the greatest you can mistake, the greatest mistake you can make in life is continuing to fear that you'll make one. That's a quote or some, I'm pretty sure I fucked up the quote. I don't even know who said it. I just know it, it just comes to mind that the greatest mistake you can make in life is continuing to fear that you will make one, meaning that you'll make a mistake. Living in fear of failure, living in fear of a mistake. Most, almost all successful people, entrepreneurs or scientists or filmmakers or artists or investors, whatever you want to talk about, the most successful ones, the, the wealthiest ones, the most fulfilled ones, the ones making the most fucking money, the most successful ones have failed the most times. And what's his name? That the, the, the dude who he said, he said, I fail. I've not failed 10,000 times. I just found 10,000 ways that didn't work. Basically, he failed his way to success. Think about that. I haven't failed 10,000 times. I just found 10,000 ways. And think about when you fail, when something doesn't work. Add the word yet into anything you do. And it's going to change the whole perspective, change the whole way you think about it, change the whole redirection that you're going to go in. Saying, all right, I, I didn't get this right yet. I didn't make that million dollars yet. I didn't make the 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 team yet. My my podcast didn't get a million downloads yet. Think about that. Throw in the word yet and it tells you, all right. Now I just using that failure as data, as information. So think about personal failures. What are some of the personal failures you had recently? What did you learn from them? How did you grow as a result of these failures? What did you? What data and information did you get so you can change direction and find something in a different direction that is a different course but is more meaningful and the direction you're actually supposed to be going in? And then break it down even further. After you figure out, all right, that's not the direction you're going. That's a fuck up. That's a failure. I'm supposed to be over here. After you do that, reflect again and go even a little deeper onto it. What else can you learn from it? How else can you grow? How can you get even more out of it? Since you didn't get there yet, how can you get even more out of it? 
And the way to prepare yourself for failure is to fail even more, to fail often. And of course, the goal is definitely success, but you're not going to have successes until you fail. Like that baseball player is getting out seven times out of 10. He's getting out. He's getting on base those hit, those hits those three times out of 10 because he's failing seven out of 10, giving him that information. So you need to be doing hard shit regularly. We talk about it here all the time on, on, the, on the podcast. Every day, do something that's beyond the normal, something that you wouldn't normally do or say, like something totally outside of the fucking the zone. Take a risk every day. Do something every day that you risk failing. Worst case is you fail at it. You kind of knew it was kind of pushing the boundaries and pushing and pressuring yourself. You kind of push the boundaries of what you're even capable of. So worst case is you fail at something that you probably should have failed at anyway. And best case is after you fail, oh, well, best case is you succeed at it. Fucking awesome. But even if you do fail, you're now going to have the success and the, the courage and the confidence to try again to make it better the next time. Like we've done these our 24-hour fitness challenges. A couple episodes back, we talked about all the lessons learned through suffering and lessons learned through the 24-hour challenges. And every challenge, we had goals that we set. Until this last challenge, I failed every single 24-hour challenge. The numbers that I thought I was going to get on push-ups in 24 hours or miles I was going to get hiking or biking or even on the video game challenge, how many kills we were going to get in 24, hour, in 24 hours. I failed every single one of them and some of them by a massive amount. Not to this last challenge, the weightlifting challenge where I hit the, hit the goal of 500,000 pounds. And all that did is made me think even bigger for the next time and said, you know what? Next time I'm getting a million fucking pounds. I'm going to redo this challenge whenever, a year from now, and I'm going to get a million fucking pounds in 24 hours. Now that I have a, you have the data, have the information, what worked, what didn't work, how to better prepare, how to better attack it and approach it. That All those failures led to that success. And then the success will lead to new failures. That, that success of 500,000 pounds is probably going to lead to a failure of trying to get a million pounds because that's doubling it, which is ridiculous because 500,000 pounds was hard as hell. But set, that, that success is probably going to lead to a new failure, which will lead to a new success. That's why those ups and downs, you got to cut those peaks and valleys. We talked about that on the emotional discipline episode. Go back and check that. Cutting the peaks and valleys and staying focused, staying centered, staying in the green, even throughout all the failures. So a, a couple couple quotes on failure in, in, in Stoicism. Epictetus also said, there's only one way to happiness and that is to cease worrying about things which are beyond your power of your will. And this is just talking about the idea that you have to let go of this fucking bitch ass fear of failure you have. I'm going to freakify this, this, this stoicism. I always like to freakify shit. Knowing that you only have control over your actions and your reactions to these failures, not the outcomes. You, you can't control. Yes, you could manipulate some of it and try to make things and change things to get better outcomes, but you can't control everything. Once it's out there into the world, like that is that is the only way to happiness is to stop worrying about that bullshit and stop fearing this failure. Let go of that fear of failure. Then you're fucking that's freedom. That's fucking freedom. And that's also the way to lead to success, as we already talked about. One of the more famous quotes on failure or overcoming adversity, whatever you want to call it, is Marcus Aurelius. He said, the, the imped, impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. That's basically saying, again, thank God this happened to me. Luckily, I fucking failed here because it's going to propel me forward. This thing in my way is what taught me, is what made me stronger. It gave me the mental toughness. It gave me the clarity. It showed me where not to go. So now I know to go over here where there's something more freaking meaningful in this other direction. It says that when we encounter failure or these impediments or roadblocks, we should adapt it and use it as a guide into what next steps we should take. Like in Psycho-Cybernetics, they talk about the the missiles, the the, the failure mechanism and the success mechanism that when a, a missile is off target, it zigzags a little bit until it gets back on target. It might be off target. It zigs right. It zigzags left and less and less and less and less and less and then boom and it explodes on the motherfucking target. Think about that. And there's, once you achieve goals, I'll tell you what, like I said, success will lead to failure 
And then that failure hopefully will lead to another success. It's an up and down. So you need to be able to control your emotions, control and maintain your discipline to stay centered throughout the entire thing. And I've noticed it myself. After you reach certain goals, you actually fail after you reach goals. There's always that dip because you get complacent. And in the military, we say complacency kills. You get so motivated by these strong personal goals that you want to want to attain. And then once you reach those goals, you, you start thinking in terms of maybe not losing what you've achieved or not going backwards or what others people might want or expect or other people's goals and standards or expectations of you instead of new goals for yourself. And then you feel like you're at t- on top. You've achieved it. And you didn't think beyond that. You have nowhere else to go. And then we go on defense rather than offense to get to the goal. You were on offense. You were attacking. You were attacking the fucking hill. And then you reach the top of the hill and you just go on defense, just defending that hill instead of finding another newer, bigger hill over in the fucking horizon that you're going to go and attack. You're sitting there defending where you are because you achieved this goal. You got complacent and complacency kills and you're just defending the hill that you just conquered instead of going out and finding a newer and bigger and better hill because Every goal you reach is just a starting foundation for the next goal. It is not the finish line. That is failure. That's why goals can lead to failure. Goals can lead to complacency. You need to set new goals, set new perspectives. Like, what do I want outside of this goal? What am I going to achieve outside of this goal? Where do I want to go? Who do I want to be beyond this goal? What is next after this? Like having an idea of what's going to be coming up after that. Again, in in psycho-cybernetics, that goal-seeking mechanism especially men, we are, are, are mission oriented. We need a mission. We always have to be on a mission or else it's failure. If we don't have a mission, we will fail. If we have nothing to attack, nothing to fight for, we will fail. And listen, if, if your business is booming, but you don't spend any time with your kids, your kids don't even know you, you're a fucking failure. You need to decide what you want, what you need outside of that situation. What is beyond that? Look forward, not backwards or down or even level or even in place. You have to always be that, have that forward thinking. What is that next mission? Yeah, we want to be in the present and controlling the present, but always that present moment is something that's propelling us forward, leading towards that next thing, that next mountain, that next hill, that next fucking war that we're going to go and attack, that next battle that's out in front of us, that next adventure that we're about to go on. You need to have goals for yourself Yeah, but you also need to have some goals that are bigger than yourself. Something that's not just forced on you, something that you want to do, something that you need to do, something that's calling you a higher calling. We talked about that a couple episodes on on the purpose episode. Go back and listen to that. And then there was an episode on faith. Go listen to that. This all ties together. All of these are synergistic, all these different episodes of the the Steve Eckert Show podcast. So kind of tying this all up, I want to talk about one of the biggest failures as I just, we just ha- had an episode, a couple episodes back on faith and talking more about, I don't want to say religion, but God and tying personal development lessons. We tied into Stoicism. We tied into Buddhism. So why wouldn't we tie it also into the Bible? And the, the, probably the biggest and most iconic story of failure in, in the history of the world was Adam and Eve in the, in the Garden of Eden, giving into temptation. They, they, they broke the only rules. They failed at the only rules that God gave them. And, and it was a major failure. And it uh, basically, according to that, men and women have been getting, were, were punished and needed to redeem themselves because of these failures. But there were other men who were given the opportunity to bounce back from this failure and rebuild this, this place that we're talking about and redeem themselves. There's always a way to bounce back from failure, no matter what it is, no matter how big of a fuck up it is, it can always come back. The main thing you have to do is keep fucking moving forward. Don't become static. You are not good. It is never good enough. It's never good enough. Forward or failure. Keep that in mind. Forward or failure. Constant and never ending improvement. Keep moving fucking forward steadily, consistently. Keep marching. Cameron Haynes in his book says, keep hammering. So what book we've been listening to Lately, we're, almost, we're finishing it up. Keep marching forward, fucking violently when needed. Don't just take that hill. Go on to the next hill and conquer the next fucking hill. Violently when needed, but also smoothly at times. 
leading the charge, like the tip of the spear, being on offense, offensively knowing when to lead. And sometimes, yeah, once in a while, defensively knowing when to follow, but always fucking moving forward, whether you're leading or following. Even your defensive maneuvers need to be moving you forward. If you stop moving, you're an easy fucking target. You are stable. You're a static target for the enemy to zoom in on and fucking strike down right where you stand. And that enemy, you can call it the opposition. You can call it the enemy. You can call it the devil. You can call it Satan, whatever you want to call it. That enemy will zoom in on you and strike you down the second you stop moving. The enemy is always coming. The enemy is always after you. Always looking to slow you down. Always looking to take you down. The enemy is always looking to stop you. Looking to fucking kill you. The enemy is expecting you to fail. The enemy is expecting you to fall and crumble and fail and then quit and not try again. Now, when you fail and you dust yourself off and get the fuck up and use that as information to go in a more meaningful direction, now you're fucking the enemy up. Now you're throwing the enemy off course. You need to keep moving to stay ahead of this enemy so they can't stab you in the fucking back because they are chasing you or they can't hit you with their arrows as they're trying to fucking stick you from behind. And guess what? When you're thinking this way and operating this way and zigzagging like this missile going towards the target and attacking these hills nonstop and not getting complacent and not just defending the hill and that's it without moving forward, the enemy usually can't keep up. Your strength and positivity are just going to be too good and too fucking strong for his desire for negativity and evil of the enemy. He's not as hungry as you are. He doesn't have the capacity or bandwidth as you are to deal with that failure and move forward, to not crumble under the fucking pressure. But if you trip, if you stumble and fall, or you get sabotaged by the enemy and slow down, the enemy will pass you up. Even if the enemy passes you up, even if the enemy gets the drop on you, you need to keep fucking moving forward. Because even though he's ahead of you, he's going to turn around to attack you head on to fucking stop your forward progress, even if you keep moving forward. So that's why you need to keep moving forward with that forward momentum. Because he's going to attack you head on if his initial cowardly sneak attack from behind, the backstabbing doesn't work. And if you keep moving forward fucking violently with your momentum, you will run that motherfucker over. You will smash him and stomp a fucking mud hole in his ass. That's the way you need to think about it. I want to finish this off with with a quote from Mark Cuban. He's on the the Shark Tank, we watch the Shark Tank all the time as a family. He said, I've learned that it doesn't matter how many times you failed, but you only have to be right once. Think about that. You only have to be right once. He says he was an idiot tons of times, but he learned from all the times of being an idiot. But it doesn't matter how many times you fucking fail, you have to be right just once. Keep fucking driving forward. Keep moving forward. Keep the momentum going forward because your reaction to failure is more crucial and critical in your life than the failure itself. Of course, failure is never the goal. Success is the goal. But when you do, be ready to fail like a motherfucker and keep driving forward onto the next hill. Do not get complacent and go operate to fucking dominate through your failures. Fail like a motherfucker. If this message meant something to you. If it broke through to you, make sure you like and share and comment down below. I want to hear about some of your failures down below in the comments. Sometimes you failed where it turned out to be a fucking blessing. It turned out to be, thank God I failed here. Tell me about some of those situations, how you personally failed and how it turned out to be a win, a bonus, how you turned that obstacle into an opportunity. Put that down below. Make sure you share this, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. We will see you next time. And in case no one told you yet today, You are fucking awesome. No excuses.